The future of energy depends on a range of technologies and people working together. And only then can the journey to reduce the carbon intensity of industrial processes happen without impacting productivity or financial performance. Hi, you're watching Global Energy Show's 5x5 series. I'm Rachel Gregory and joining us today is Kelly Newnham, Senior Vice President Growth at Worley. Kelly, thank you for being here today. Hey, thanks so much for having me. Can you tell us more about Worley? What is it that you do? Worley is a worldwide team of consultants, engineers, construction workers, and data scientists with one thing in common. We love a good challenge. We've helped design, diversify, and improve some of the world's most complex assets. The production, transformation, storage, and consumption of energy will continue to change. And together we tackle climate change. We navigate the energy transition and circular economy, and we keep pace with the digital transformation. Sustainability is at the core of Worley's purpose and strategy. Our work today ensures we have a tomorrow, one that we can all thrive in. Kelly, what are your thoughts on the energy transition and how is this an opportunity for the oil and gas industry? I think no single technology or sole entity can solve our decarbonization challenge that's ahead of us, but a combination of them can. The future of energy depends on a range of technologies and people working together, and only then can the journey to reduce the carbon intensity of industrial processes happen without impacting productivity or financial performance. So the energy transition and sustainability pivot are fundamentally changing our notion of value. We need to change processes, develop new technologies, and create entirely new value chains. And we need to do this fast. It will require businesses and governments to transform how they engage communities and develop and deliver projects. We need to invest with foresight and invest in technological options in the earmarked land we'll need over coming years in the transition. We need to nurture people's trust and involve people who will be impacted by the energy infrastructure or transition in the planning and development process. And overall, we need transparency to accelerate approval and regulatory processes so that people trust in that governance. How could Canada repurpose its existing energy infrastructure in the development of alternative fuels? I think Canada is in a good spot right now with our ability to use the infrastructure that we have in place in the short and medium term. The energy transition to alternative fuels has allowed us to bring out of service infrastructure, for instance, back online and fit for service repurposing of our pipelines and other infrastructure to support things like renewable natural gas, carbon and hydrogen. We see a strong investment trend for partial and complete refinery conversions to biofuels and other development of synthetics. We have opportunities within our waste streams to capture and reprocess. And this applies to everything, including wastewater recycling. Throughout the next decade, what should companies in energy be doing right now to better prepare for the changing market? Worley has just published a paper with uh, Princeton University that explores the practical shifts required to develop and deliver the infrastructure needed to achieve our net zero uh, ambitions. But really, net zero requires a tapestry of different technology approaches, working within resource, geographic markets, envirosocial, political constraints. We need to develop all possible decarbonization technologies, spreading our effort and investment broadly. We need to form coalitions empowered to hit net zero targets and deliver value. Value in financial terms, in job creation, and in clean environments. And we need digital enablement. Digital is key to accelerating the net zero transition in the way that ensures transparency, trust, and shared value. What is one trend that you see impacting Canada's energy sector the most right now? I think the acceleration of ESG and the energy transition really has created what I will refer to as opportunities uh, within the energy sector. It has accelerated the need to shift our approach and our expectations. And the transition gives us a chance to make sure energy is affordable globally and available to more of the world's population. There is an enhanced ESG focus and expectations will be even further enhanced with ESG metrics that will be very different over the next few years. What does this mean for companies? Getting to net zero will need significant investment. If we're going to find the capital to make it happen, investors need to feel motivated to commit and confident that environmental and social values will be preserved. It's going to mean expanding how society considers and shares those values. For industry, this requires retooling the people, the need to collaborate with each other, and really drive partnerships 
to the market. Thank you, Kelly. It was great chatting with you today and learning more about War League. Thank you so much. It was great to be here. And thank you for watching Global Energy Show's 5x5 series. Make sure to like this video, share it to your networks, and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can stay up to date on all of our new videos.